Welcome to uh, part one of the how to read a weather sounding series. Um, basically trying to clear up confusion and learn the basics on how to read a weather sounding. First episode here is going to be about the skew T chart. The skew T chart is extremely important when talking about not only uh, basic weather but severe weather and uh, big time in winter precipitation as well. So this right here um, on your left side, upper left uh, part of the sounding normally is a skew T chart. Um, and this is, uh, this is actually an example here from today's GFS. Um, just a basic example. Um, and we'll go into basically what a skew T chart is, the different parts, um, what you can read from it, including some CAPE and SIN levels, which we'll get into a little bit later. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at the basic components that go into a skew T chart. So we're going into here the basic parts of a skew T chart. Um, taking a look here, this is um, a basic a basic skew T chart. And first thing to know is a skew T chart is uh, is on an x y coordinate plane. So this x axis down here um, is uh, degrees Celsius. So this is temperature. Um, down here and followed on the y-axis by, uh, by the altitude. So obviously the higher you go um, is the higher it is in the atmosphere. So just th imagine it as like a 3D cutout of the atmosphere. Up here is your highest and this top level is the highest level of your atmosphere. Down here is your surface. Um, so that's basically how to look at a skew t chart. Um, Positioning wise, but let's look at the different components. So obviously this has it kind of uh, kind of laid out here So this red line and normally the lines are red is your, uh, your temperature um, As you go higher in the atmosphere uh, So obviously it is 50 degrees down here. You can look at down here is 50 degrees um, and this is normally in in a uh, in Fahrenheit so this is 50 degrees Fahrenheit down at the surface um, but as you go higher in the atmosphere, obviously temperature changes. Um, taking a look at this green line, this is your dew point. Um, and the, obviously this is, uh, as you go higher in the atmosphere, the dew point changes as well. Because um, as temperature changes, so does the uh, dew point normally. But taking a look, this is 45 degrees down at the surface, uh, dew point levels. Um, that's just basic how to read. Um, these basic lines on a skew chart going over here I'm not gonna worry mixing ratio we're not gonna worry about that right now um, that's that's higher higher level stuff this is just very very basics it's very very basic um, taking a look this are these are wind barbs here on the uh, on the right side wind barbs are basically showing you the strength and direction um, that the wind is blowing as it uh, as you go higher in the atmosphere. So, down in this bottom level here, this is the surface. Um, surface wind is r really calm, um, but coming out of the uh, the south or the east southeast. Um, but as you go higher in the atmosphere, um, this it, it kind of strengthens, as indicated by the three little lines there. Um, but it strengthens and is coming out of the uh, west northwest. So basically, a complete 180 change. Um, this uh, promotes wind shear. I know you've heard the term bulk wind shear. This is basically the amount of change um, of wind direction in the uh, as you go higher in the atmosphere, and this can cause rotation in thunderstorms if they are present. Um, now let's take a look at look at an example here of uh, Cape and Sin and how you can read that um, from a skew T chart. So this is looking at CAPE and SIN, also known as SIN H sometimes. Um, first of all, what is CAPE? CAPE stands for um, Convective Available Potential Energy. Um, and that is basically thunderstorm fuel. It is what goes into a thunderstorm um, and basically either starts it up and starts storm initiation or strengthens it and causes it to be severe. The more CAPE, the, uh, the stronger the storms and the higher storm initiation levels um, there will be. So this CAPE is, uh, is associated um, in the mid-levels. Um, it's associated in the surface um, and mid-levels and upper levels of the atmosphere. 
Um, so basically this black line, uh, here let me get my writing tool out real quick. This black line you see here is the lapse rate. Um, lapse rate is um, the what it, the uh, change, the cooling down of air temperature as you go higher in the atmosphere. Um, so basically CAPE is the temperature compared to the lapse rate. Um, and the bigger uh, gap between the two, um, with the temperature being, uh, being cooler than the lapse rate, the more CAPE there is um, in the, uh, the uh, mid-levels um, of the atmosphere. So um, that is CAPE, and you can read it here. It's, it's represented here in the red. Um, and uh, once again, storm fuel, the difference between the lapse rate and the, uh, and the temperature. Um, normally, obviously, when you look at this, you can't, it's hard to really read it out by the naked eye. So normally, in the sounding, you will have um, the CAPE levels, as you can see over here. It will be listed out in the number form. So 2200 CAPE, that is, that is extremely high. And that is a, a, a really, um, a really, uh, basically a bomb waiting to go off in the atmosphere. That is, that is prime thunderstorm initiation um, in the uh, in Springfield where the sounding is from. Now let's go into uh, to SIN or SIN H a little bit, which can... Um, Either promote or, in most times, it is a, a capping inversion that'll uh, that'll shoo away storm initiation. We'll go into that here in a moment. So, SIN or SIN H stands for convective inhibition. Convective inhibition is also known as capping. If you've ever heard the term a cap inversion or uh, the strength of capping, um, that is the SIN um, number and the level of SIN in the atmosphere. Um, so basically what, what capping inversion is, um, is when you have warmer air at the surface with cooler air above it, and that does not promote storm, but it's basically keeping storm development, um, at bay. Uh, you normally want, so this temperature line here, um, it goes across the lapse rate in the warmer um, area. So once this temperature line, let's say this temperature line then goes like this, that is where the cap breaks. Um, when you have this free flow and the cape can now come to the surface and that's where you develop surface cape. Um, so if you have the, uh, the temperature line here um, on the right side or the warm side of the, uh, of the lapse rate line, then you have a capping and that is um, that is that does not promote storm development that will basically keep st keep storms at bay until that cap breaks normally what happens is the cape will build up if you have high cape levels um, and then a capping level if that cap level breaks you will get immediate I mean right off the bat you'll get storms potentially strong and severe and that's where supercells develop when you got the capping building and then the uh, or the the cape building and the, the cap breaks and you got this flow of of uh, convective available potential potential energy or cape that'll flow to the surface, and uh, that is that is prime atmosphere for uh, for severe storms. And normally, obviously, once again, this is uh, not really easy to to uh, to look at and and know the number by the naked eye. So on this right side here, you can see the capping. Um, if there is strong capping, it is associated with a negative number. Um, and so capping is actually what it'll take to what basically if you see this negative it'll it's what it takes to break it what it takes um, this number is what it takes to break this cap um, so capping can be or sin can be uh, broken apart or degraded by sunshine making it through either clouds um, or a sudden warming of the surface um, so that is basically what ca uh, what cape and sin are or convective inhibition. Uh, we're going to take a look at the sounding here and do our own reading on it now. So this is taking a look at the sounding we were looking at earlier. Um, and this is a real sounding from the GFS model. Um, this is valid Monday um, at 0Z. And this is actually uh, from 
believe I got this from uh, southern Louisiana where we have the potential for uh, severe weather. Um, so if we take a look at this um, sounding, a few things jump out at me first. If you look down here, you see Cape Numbers. Um, and this is, stands for Surface and Mid-Level Cape. Um, and those numbers are extremely high as you can see. Um, this is the lapse rate line right here. And you see the temperature is cooler than the lapse rate. That was a bad line there. Cooler than the lapse rate all the way through. Now it being cooler all the way to the surface also tells me there is no capping. This red line isn't on this side of the, uh, of the, um, of the lapse rate. So as you can see here on this bottom section here, the uh, sin H, the convective inhibition levels, remember that capping, um, is very weak with the negative, I mean, 28 is nothing, negative 39 is nothing. There's, there's nothing that is uh, keeping um, this atmosphere, or there's nothing that's keeping these storms from, from building and becoming surface-based storms. That's two things you can pick up immediately. The other thing is we look at wind barbs over here on this right side. One thing I do see is there isn't much turning with height. Um, normally you want to get, so this at the surface, um, these are coming, these are uh, southwest, basically due southwest winds. And as you go a little um, higher in the atmosphere, maybe it's more uh, west-southwest, but there isn't that much um, turning of wind or wind shear um, to get strong rotation in the atmosphere. Um, that would be a limiting factor to tornadoes, but with the uh, amount of cape, 2,000 joules um, are, are is pretty, uh, pretty high level. So it does promote severe weather, but maybe not in the tornado form due to the lack of wind shear um, or the changing of wind as you go higher in the atmosphere. So that was just taking a look um, at the the uh, the skew T chart and how you can use it, how it works, the different parts of it, and how you can use it to forecast severe weather. So I hope this clears things up. Um, once again, you could go into much more detailed levels with it in the skew T chart, but that was a basic rundown. Um, now, so hopefully, when you look at this in the future, if somebody goes, "Hey, take a look at this." You can understand, look at the parts, break it down part by part, piece by piece, um, and you can understand what it means and help forecast um, in the future. So thank you all for watching, um, and as always, stay safe.